Hi, my name is Aaron Thomas, and this video is part of a series we're doing on final decision-making authority in custody cases. In this video, I wanna talk about final decision-making authority in the area of medical decisions. First, a quick primer on the definition of final decision-making authority. When parents share legal custody, they have an obligation to try to agree on major decisions that impact their child. If they can't agree, then one parent gets to make the decision. That power is called final decision-making authority or tie-breaking authority. There are four categories of final decision-making authority, education, extracurriculars, medical, and religion. Let's talk about medical decision-making. Medical decision-making is obviously important, but the scope of decisions that the parent who gets that authority gets to make is smaller than most people assume. So let me answer the question. What kinds of decisions does the person with final decision-making authority over medical decisions get to make? So you should know that they don't get to make emergency decisions. If your child is in an accident, the parent who is with the child is always going to be authorized to make a decision on the spot. And that makes sense when you think about it, right? If you're in an emergency medical situation with your child, you don't have to contact the other parent before contacting 911. If you're at a hospital and the doctor says, we need an answer right now, you don't have to wait to hear back from the other parent. You make the emergency decision. And let's be honest, most of the time, if there's an emergency, most parents are going to do the same thing. If your child breaks their arm, most parents, no matter how much they don't get along, are going to do the exact same thing and take their child to the hospital to be treated. On the other end of the spectrum, the parent with final decision-making authority over medical decisions doesn't have the power to decide very minor medical issues. For example, if your child is with you and has a headache, you don't have to contact the other parent for permission to give your child Tylenol or to put Band-Aid on a cut or anything else minor. Day-to-day -day medical decisions are allowed to be made by the parent who is with the child at the time. Generally, that's also going to include things like deciding whether your child is too sick to go to school that day, other minor things like that. So what does the parent with final medical decision-making actually get to decide? That parent gets final say over medical decisions that are also not emergencies, major decisions that are not emergencies, and that tends to be limited. One category of those might be vaccines. That's a major decision that might not be an emergency. Your annual flu shot is not something that is mandatory to go to school. That could fall under a parent's medical decision-making authority. Other medicines that the doctors say may or may not be given, that could fall under that category. Another example is braces. Some parents see them as necessary, some parents don't. It's not an emergency, but it is a major decision. And sometimes parents disagree because braces are typically not covered by insurance and the cost can be thousands of dollars. But the biggest issue I see disputes over is mental health treatment. Say your child is diagnosed with ADHD and the doctor says you can try a prescription or you can start with therapy. Reasonable minds may disagree about what approach to try and when. So that would be something that falls under medical decision-making authority. Therapy is a huge one. Some parents believe in it, some don't. And even parents who, who may be fans of therapy may disagree on how often the child goes or what therapist the child goes to. So that's something that could fall under medical decision-making authority. There are other decisions, of course, this list isn't meant to be exhaustive. Choosing a doctor or dentist, choosing a generic prescription versus the name brand, maybe LASIK surgery, these items would fall under non-emergency but are still major decisions. Depending on your feelings about these types of issues compared to your child's other parent, medical decision-making authority may or may not be a priority to shoot for in your custody case. You may agree on most of or all of these issues. They may not be a big dispute. So your individual preferences are going to make the decision as to how important medical decision-making authority is to your case. If this is an issue that you have, or if you have other questions about custody, please feel free to give us a call at the number on your screen and set up a consultation. Also, hit the subscribe button below if you wanna continue learning more about family law issues in Georgia.